The coach of the Raiders on that day was the same man whose voice then came into our living rooms for decades as the everyman voice of football and whose name then also became synonymous of a video game version of the game he loved, the game we all loved more because of the way he shaped it in countless ways, all rightfully culminating in his bust, leading the conversation every night when the lights go out at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. The great John Madden passed away this week at the age of 85. The massive popularity and vast cultural impact of football would be impossible to imagine without John Madden. He was not just a successful coach, an Emmy Award winning media personality. What a way to start a Super Bowl. That's what Cincinnati wants to do. You just want to get out of that locker room and get on this field. John Madden was a larger than life figure. Tastes great. Down. Around and beyond the sport. Born in Minnesota, he came of age as a football player in Northern California and was drafted by the Eagles in 1958. A training camp injury as a rookie kept Madden from ever seeing NFL regular season action. So he turned to coaching. And his NFL coaching career eventually began as a Raiders assistant in 1967. Two years later, in 1969, Al Davis named John Madden head coach, and his impact was immediate. Start off and stay after the whole game. He took Oakland to six AFC titles in an eight-year span. They're bobbing him down in the end zone. John Madden's grin is from ear to ear. He looks like a slick watermelon. Reaching the pinnacle in the 1976 season with a win over the Vikings in Super Bowl XI. The Oakland Raiders are the new world champions of pro football. John Madden never had a losing season and still has the highest winning percentage by any coach in NFL history with at least 100 games on the sideline. Philip Piano gets Madden the football. He displays it for all to see. I gave it everything I had. It's basically that simple. I don't have any more. Madden retired from coaching in 1978 and transitioned to his equally successful second act. He makes a little basketball twist there and pivot. They had to hit, they had to be physical. As an Emmy Award winning broadcaster, he forged a dynamic partnership with Pat Summerall. You know, John, you and I have been around this game of pro football a long time. And in many ways, that duo became the voice of the league on television. This guy crosses here, he crosses here. They have no idea where we are, who we are, where we're coming from, or who we're throwing to. Very interesting. During his time as a broadcaster, Madden popularized what became known as the All Madden Team. This guy is a threat on any play, any time. A collection of players who epitomized Madden's gritty, hard-nosed approach to the game. His toughness going inside, outside. That persona messed with Madden's unassuming demeanor and storytelling abilities to form a combination that pushed football on television to new heights. Watch the center here. The block, boom, boom. They get this going back, and then they can get the first down. His name, of course, is familiar to two generations of football fans who never saw him prowl the Raiders' sidelines. What the hell are you trying to do? Or perhaps broadcast a big NFC matchup for CBS. Here, I don't know how the 49ers can be beat. Thanks in part to the blockbuster video game franchise, the name Madden is football. As the NFL grew from a fledgling new league to a cultural phenomenon, John Madden played a vital role. I was lucky enough to be carried off the field after we won Super Bowl XI. And today feels like the second time in my life that I'm being carried off the shoulders of others. His influence continues to be felt and forever will be felt across the game. The Raiders will be wearing a patch with John Madden's initials on their helmets today in Indianapolis and throughout the league being honored by players. Stephon Diggs, pro bowler, will be wearing these Madden <laughs> cleats today against Atlanta in Western New York. That. That's great. You know, I'm, okay. I'm honored to be <clears throat> on the air right now with two guys who share that bust gallery room with him at the Pro Football Hall of Fame and somebody who, who knew Madden so very well, and that's why I'd like to start with you, Steve Mariucci. I, 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 I could already see 
your emotion and I feel it and I love you and um, I want to send my condolences to the family through you and, uh, and that camera, I'll give you the floor right here, Steve. Well, thanks. I, I was one of the lucky guys that uh, were able to be a personal friend of John's. And um, we all have friends. We all have friends, right? But John was a friend on a pedestal. Now, what do I mean by that, Irv? A friend on a pedestal. He, even though you did everything like uh, other friends, he had a certain status. He had a certain celebrity. Yeah. He always Who did, knows? ever since the day we met him, right? And um, the last time I golfed, okay, yeah. was with John Madden. We were, we were in a tournament over at Ruby Hills in, in the East Bay, a Raider fundraiser. I don't know why I let John drive, but anyway, he said, Mooch, are you hungry? I go, I'm always hungry. I go, he said, me too. We took a left. We went into the clubhouse, and we, we, we missed the whole tournament. We were eating all day. I haven't golfed since. I haven't golfed since. I don't think he has either. Maybe one time at Sawgrass with you guys, we hit one on 17. Right. That's it. We hung up our clubs together that day, and we said, well, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to play more bocce ball, right? Well, Rich, you were at our bocce ball tournament it's a beautiful before. Beautiful fundraiser. And look at this. I mean, this is maybe 20 years ago. And Tony Bruno came out. Can you go back to that first, that first one? Tony Bruno came out from Philadelphia to do his radio show live, and they started for the first time in North America history. We had a booth for bocce ball. All right, and Tony Bruno started it, and John Madden had to be John Madden because all of a sudden, here he goes. He he's got, look at little Pasquale over there. He's got the green ball, and he just hits the red ball, boom, and it goes in the back wall, and it's right next to the Polino. And then, and then it's, good. we got to measure this. Get the officials out here. But look at Pasquale. He's jumping all over the place. He turned everything into fun. And we had a tournament over there for 22 years, and we raised millions and millions of dollars for Special Olympics and juvenile diabetes, and we raised money for the local football teams with new helmets every year, and, and uh, the foundations and police and Mothers Against Drunk Drivers and you name it, and it was the, that was the thing of the year in the Bay Area to come to that party fundraising event because John made it so much fun. And then he got me involved with the player safety advisory panel. Mooch, you're on the panel. Okay, let's go. Well, you know what? Every darn time, Herf, I'm home watching Monday night football or Thursday night football. Yeah. He's call. He would call. call yeah. He would call on the phone. Hey, Mooch, did you see that? Look at these guys. They're not even wearing their pants up right. They got to get their knee pads over their knees. They're not even on the knees. We got to talk about right. that in the next committee. And then I would call him back later in the day and he'd say, look at Mike Bennett's shoulder pads. He doesn't even have shoulder pads. I know it. Write that down. We got to talk about that in our next meeting. But he was so <laughs> he was much involved so with football. Involved. He always will be. And then Gail would get mad at me because yeah. I, I would always ask her to wait for the commercial to talk to me. She goes, how come John can talk to you during the football game? I go, because he's John Madden. That's why he's a friend on a pedestal. John Madden loved football. He loved life. And we all love John Madden. Mm. Love you, Mooch. Yeah. Yeah. Love you, Mooch. Mm. You know, and That's great. So well said. It, 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 it's just, so you know, well just for me personally, you know, a uh, 52 year old guy. I was growing up in, uh, in Staten Island, New York, watching football and on the basement television. And you know, I, I kind of remember him as a coach, but the first time I, I remember him was when he was bursting through the screen on those Miller Lite commercials as the biggest personality on a commercial oh. filled with personalities like Mickey yeah. Spillane and yeah. Rodney Dangerfield. And then, you know, just, anybody who's out there right now, anybody who's out there right now, we're going to be watching Romo later and Aikman later and obviously Chris Collinsworth and so many more. Yeah. Anybody who draws on the screen, we take it for granted right All now. Of he it, was the Rich. first to yeah. do that. All of it, Rich. All and he of made us smarter right. with the most plain English. It those, was those, a those meetings, those, those meetings, those production meetings. Because right. I was talking about Rich on this weekend, Rich, Rich Del Ripple, who set up those production meetings where we go in the day before, they go to the practice, they go to the production meeting. John started all of that. He started all of that. He said, No, I want to go in the day before, I want to look at some film, I want to watch practice. Nobody was doing that. When, when, when John used to come to Dallas, because he basically, like Troy said, he narrated our career. When John would come to Dallas, he would park that bus right out there. Every player wanted to walk on that bus. When Rich would come and say, Michael, you know, we got these other guys. I don't want to do that. He said, but we got John. Come. Oh, where, where, where would John be? You know, you right away, 
You wanted to talk to John. I remember telling him one time, right? I, I said, John, listen, I'm going to tell you this, but don't you ever tell anybody about it, how I get open on those deep routes. I said, I'm running a route. I've got user right here. I can't outrun him, John. But I said, I can put my elbow right on him, and right before the ball gets the whew, and I got that ball. I said, that's between you and I. Just, you just keep between you and I. Man, the next game, as soon as I did, did you see what the label? Wait, 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 what the label right there? That's that little push up. You got to catch it. I went to John after the guy said, John, that was between you and I. Why you tell everybody <laughs> about that? He said, Michael, I got you. I, I, I got a commitment to my audience now. I got to let them know what's going on. He stayed true to the game. He's, getting, he, he's done so much for NFL football that people do not know about. I just, I always say this. Sometimes when some people, there's, there's certain people that go, that the world should stop. They deserve the world to stop and notice that they have left. And John is certainly one of those guys. And it just felt different with John Madden. You talked about being on a pedestal. I mean, I remember I fell in love with football to John Madden's voice. I was a Cowboys yeah. fan growing up. He called every Cowboys game. Yes. And when I was falling in love with the game that would lead to everything that it's given me, it was to that voice. It was to that man. And then mm -hmm. every time you get in a production meeting or you knew John Madden was calling your game, you're like, it's bigger. You it's know, bigger. It's yeah, special because John Madden right, right. is a was. part of it. That will be his legacy to all of us in, in different yeah. ways, but that will be his legacy, and, and we're going to miss him. He put and a I light got, on the big uglies. You know, the big boys yeah, down right, front. Sure. Remember, the turkey everybody legs started on, talking about the big uglies and the, making them pretty. Right, the they turkey legs job. on Thanksgiving. Yeah. And then, of course, I've got three kids, uh, 13, 10, and 8, who know him from the video games. Yeah. And when you go into Canton at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, stop by his bust, and then maybe stay quiet so you could hear him talking to Al Davis and the rest of the Raiders who he won a championship with and the rest of the players who he Don't admired. And we buddy. love you, John Madden. May you rest in peace. I love you, Coach.